Hi there, this is Maher Haddad. So in this uh, first lecture, I'm going to uh, start working on the Mac VLAN. So I'm going to explain to you what is the Mac VLAN, where to use it and how to use it. And after we have the whole information about the theoretical part, then we can apply that in a lab. So let's go directly and start with the explanation. So what is Mac VLAN? Mac VLAN means Mac Virtual Local Air Network. So that's the abbreviation of Mac VLAN, which is Mac. We know what is the Mac address, uh, so that's the layer two address and virtual local area network. We can start using Mac VLAN starting the router OS version 7.12 RC1. So from this version onward, you can use the Mac VLAN. So Microtech have added this uh, feature on the, um, the uh, router OS since the version 7.12 RC1 and onward. I think at this moment we are on version 7.15, so that's fine. We can use Mac VLAN without any problem. Just to mention that this feature, Mac VLAN, is normally coming from Linux. And as we know, that Microtech Router OS is based on Linux, so that's why Microtech they have put that uh, feature for us to be able to use it on the Microtech Router OS. So, what can we do with the Mac VLAN? With the Mac VLAN, we have possibility to create multiple virtual interfaces on a single interface. What does it mean? Let's say that we have here the uh, interface, uh, for example, on the Microtech router Ethernet 2. So this is a just single physical interface, right? So what we can do, we can just create under that one some um, interfaces which are virtual, so like Mac VLAN one and then I create another one which is Mac VLAN 2 and we create more and more and more so what this has is a function so why we really need to create different interfaces on a physical interface well think of like and that's something I'm going to explain it to you and just just right now so think like we are going to be connected to the ISP via PPPoE and um, we want to get two sessions to the PPPO, or three sessions. So normally what we should have done, so this is the Microtech router, this is our ISP. So to be able to get two PPPOE connections, then in this case, we normally have to put a switch. So this is connected to the uh, ISP. And then we put this switch, we connect to two ports. So we are using two ports to be able to get two PPPOE connections from the ISP. So instead of doing that, we can create two different Mac uh, uh, VLAN under the interface, or we can just create one, meaning that we got one PPPoE session on that interface, the physical one, and one on the Mac VLAN that we are creating. Without, we need to use a switch and we use uh, two ports. So that's the beauty of the Mac VLAN. All right, so that's normally where most of the time we use it. Of course, when I say PPPoE, also the DHCP as well would be applied. So we have to think about PPPoE, but also about DHCP server. In case our provider is providing us IPs via DHCP servers, then we can use more than one Mac VLAN, which are virtual interfaces. And each interface has its own Mac address that I'm going to explain it right now. So here they say with each Mac VLAN interface, a unique MAC address will be assigned to that virtual interface while it is associated with the physical interface. So what does it mean while it is associated with the physical interface? As we said, because it is inheriting or it's coming under the physical interface. When we create MAC VLAN, we have to create it under the physical interface. That's why it's associated, but it has its own MAC address. It doesn't take the MAC address of the physical interface where we are creating the MAC VLAN under it. So it will take a totally different and unique MAC address. So the other side will see, oh, this is just, it looks like an interface for him, right? Which has a MAC address, yeah, and yeah, we can also provide for it an IP from the HTTP server or from the PPPoE server. So very important, remember, each VLAN has its unique MAC address. Here, I would like to mention to you something that MAC VLAN is not really like a VLAN, the, vir the virtual LAN that we all know, right? So it's, uh, it's called MAC VLAN, but we are not really doing anything with VLAN over here. 
And also, I want to mention something that Mac VLAN is not a Mac based VLAN. So there is a big difference between the Mac VLAN and the Mac based VLAN. What is the Mac based VLAN? That's something I have uh, explained about it in my switching uh, course. Normally, if you have, let's say, a computer and you have switch here, and uh, what you can do, you can take the MAC address of your computer and wherever he connect from any switches on our network, he will always be on the same VLAN because you take the MAC address of this computer and we say this MAC address has to be on VLAN 10, for example. So say we have a network like this, many switches. So those are all switches. And then this computer is connected to here. Then if we made a configuration on the uh, Mac based uh, VLAN, we say that this computer should be on VLAN 10. Then even if he connects here or any other place on the network, he will always be on VLAN 10. That's what is Mac based VLAN. While Mac VLAN, we are explaining what Mac VLAN is. So that's totally different scenario. It's just the fact that we create virtual interfaces under the physical interface and those virtual interfaces, they have a Mac address for them. And then it looks like a normal interface for the provider, then he can provide it on that interface or that Mac VLAN interface, IP address, the subnet mask and so forth, as it is a real interface. Now, the difference between a normal VLAN and a Mac VLAN is that the normal VLAN has same Mac address of the physical interface. So normal VLAN, when you create a normal VLAN, then it has the same MAC address of the physical interface, but will rely on the VLAN tag. While on the MAC VLAN, there is no VLAN tag and the MAC address is unique on each virtual interface. And that's what I have put for you here. I can show that for you. So normally on the normal VLAN, we have this. This is the, uh, the header that uh, we are getting, which is the Ethernet frame. And uh, you can see when you add a VLAN, you will add a header here, which is a22.1q header, which has the VLAN ID. But look, the MAC addresses, destination and source, they did not change. They are the same. They are still taking the same <coughs> MAC address and the, uh, for the source and for the destination. But it will rely on the header here when you say it's going to be on VLAN 10 or going to be on VLAN 20 or 30 or whatever. Right, so here it will tag a VLAN ID to say that this traffic is going to be on that VLAN. While on the Mac VLAN, we have the same like that one, but with a different uh, Mac address. Okay, so the Mac address is totally different. It has nothing to do with the uh, 802.1q header. We don't add any VLAN tag when we are using the Mac VLAN. Now, where to use the Mac VLAN? Mostly used to have, as I said, more than one connection to a PPPoE server or a DHCP server, which are connected to the same physical interface. So we have a physical interface coming to uh, an ISP, and then we want to get more than one connection from that ISP. Instead of using two ports, three ports, or whatever, we can create Mac VLANs under that physical interface, and then you would get the IPs and uh, the gateway and whatever on that Mac VLAN. Now, there are some restrictions that I would like to mention that you, and it is mentioned on uh, the uh, Microtech website as well, that Mac VLAN interfaces are not supported by containers. So if you ever want to use containers, please don't use Mac VLAN. It's not going to work. The containers, they have some other virtual interfaces that they use. So whenever you think that you want to use container, of course, I have a course also speaking about containers. Um, then if you want, you can also enroll in that course and learn how to create containers on the Microcrater OS. But the idea of containers is just that you uh, emulate a software uh, on the, the Microtech uh, router OS. I'm not going to speak about containers now, but just to have an idea that if you want to use container, please don't use MacVLAN because it's not going to work. That's one thing. The second thing is that if there is a VLAN configured on the physical interface, so you have physical interface and you are assigning the normal VLAN, which is then you are using the VLAN tag over here, then the Mac VLAN cannot receive packets from that VLAN. So if you have a VLAN configured on a physical interface and you want to configure under that interface of Mac VLAN, then the Mac VLAN will not receive packet 
uh, on that VLAN. So in this case, if you want to really use the uh, uh, VLANs, and then it's required to use bridging for more complex layer two solution involving VLANs. So uh, whenever you think that on that interface, I'm going to use VLANs, then, then don't use Mac VLAN. It's much better because do not have problems with the Mac VLAN. So this is all what I wanted to show you in this first lecture, some explanation about the Mac VLAN. So now we know that Mac VLAN is nothing more than a virtual interface that we created under the uh, physical interface. It has its own Mac address, and then we can use it to be able to get more connections from the PPPoE server or from the DHCP server. And then we have seen that it's totally different than the normal VLAN, so there is no tagging here and uh, we don't do any tagging on the Mac uh, VLAN. And also I have showed you in which cases you better not use v Mac VLANs. So whenever you are using a uh, container, don't use Mac VLAN. And whenever you are going to use a VLANs on that physical interface, it's preferable that you don't use Mac VLAN. So this is all what I wanted to show you in this first lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lecture.